Lots of news today. Bubba Wallace issues an apology of sorts. Ty Dillon is continuing his NASCAR Cup Series career with a different team. And Mark Martin feels he was snubbed by longtime team owner Jack Roush this past weekend. <laughs> the drama never ends. <laughs> How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Lots of ground to cover today. Let's just get right to it. We'll start with the big announcement that was made earlier this morning. Spire Motorsports confirmed their driver lineup for 2023. Corey LaJoy will be returning for his third season in the seven car. Meanwhile, Ty Dillon will take over full-time duties in the number 77. LaJoy will keep his current crew chief, Ryan Sparks, who will actually move into a larger competition role. The team over at the 77 is staying the same. But now Spire will have two full-time drivers, Corey LaJoy and Ty Dillon, contending for points next season. That's a big step forward for that team. A few months ago, both Ty Dillon and Petty GMS mutually agreed to part ways at the end of this season. Petty GMS wanted Noah Gregson in the 42 car, and they got him. Ty Dillon looking for a ride, lands at Spire. I think this is a suitable pairing. I like Ty Dillon, but I've never loved Ty Dillon. He's a solid driver that I think at this point we could consider a Cup Series veteran. Borderline, maybe. He's got, what, like four or five years of experience? I don't expect him to set the world on fire behind the wheel of the 77 next year, but I don't think that's what they expect of him. I think they expect him to just help lay the groundwork, establish a solid foundation that the 77 team can build on in the coming years. It's encouraging to hear from Spire leadership that they plan on being competitive one day. Corey LaJoy at times this year has looked like a top 10 or top 15 contender. Their goal is clearly to do that way more often. So uh, Spire raised a lot of eyebrows when they first entered the sport, you know, kind of early on in the charter system era, but I, I like what they're doing. Two full-time drivers next year. We'll see how it goes. Next, Bozy, writing for Rodentrack.com, is reporting that NASCAR will use rain tires at select short ovals next season. This is big, big news. We've seen rain tires used pretty frequently now at road courses the past few years, but now NASCAR is ready to try them out in competition at short tracks, oval tracks. My guess is tracks like Martinsville, I'd consider New Hampshire, maybe even Phoenix, even though it like never rains out there. Those are the types of tracks that rain tires will likely be available at. I don't think we'll see wet condition racing at Bristol anytime soon. Bozy also wrote about an updated rain light that will still flash in the rain, but will also go solid when the driver is on the brakes. That should help with visibility. I like that move quite a bit. Bozy also notes the difference between rain racing and wet condition racing in this article. I'll link the full article down below, but he writes, this is more of a wet surface solution than a true rain racing solution. They're not going to race through standing water. They're not going to race through any significant amount of falling rain. The hope, I believe, is to shorten the track drying period. Instead of having to wait a full hour and a half to dry the track completely, you can go green after about, you know, 40, 45 minutes where the track's mostly dry. There's maybe some slicker spots here and there, but as long as there's no standing water, I think NASCAR will be comfortable running rain tires at some of these short ovals next season. So we know they've been testing this a couple times in the last year or two. I didn't think the test was far enough along that we'd actually consider implementing rain tires at short ovals into actual races next season, but this has been tested at least one or two times. Uh, We'll see. I mean, anything that allows the sport to fight back against Mother Nature, I'm in favor of as long as safety and integrity of the competition uh, isn't compromised. We'll have to wait and see if rain tires are even needed next season, but it sounds like they will be available when, if the time comes. Next story, just before the green flag at Las Vegas this past weekend, NASCAR Hall of Famer Mark Martin got to drive the actual car that he won at Las Vegas in back in 1998. He restored this car, old Vaveline sponsored Ford Taurus. He got to make some pace laps in front of the field. It was awesome getting to see those red, white, and blue Vaveline colors, that old retro spiky number six font in HD on my 2022 television. <laughs> A really cool moment. I'm sure it was awesome for fans in the stands to see this old school Gen 4 cruising down the front straightaway. I know when I've been at races the last few years where they bring out an old car that's been restored and let it run some pace laps. Like I was there at Talladega a few years ago when they brought back Dale Earnhardt's final win car and had it make some pace laps. And 
That was cool. So I'm jealous of those who got to see it in person. Mark Martin seemed to be having a blast out there, getting to drive his old car, getting to say hi to a lot of familiar faces, some newer stars of the sport as well. But one person Mark Martin apparently never encountered all weekend long was his longtime team owner, Jack Roush. And Mark Martin didn't sound too happy about this. He put out two kind of passive aggressive tweets following the race on Sunday. Let's read the first one. I was hoping to see some folks from RFK Racing today, but never did. The fans' response was overwhelming though. Thank you to each and every one of you. Hmm, he goes out of his way there to tag RFK. Then just a few hours later, he tweeted this. I love Jack Roush with all my heart. I stayed with him 19 years because he gave me a chance when no one else would. We missed a once in a lifetime opportunity to get a picture together celebrating a 24-year-old car and winning moment. Mark Martin is not letting this go. Now, someone from RFK, someone in their PR department, did reach out on Twitter and publicly apologize to Mark Martin. I have to 100% take the blame on this one. I dropped the ball, plain and simple, and wouldn't be able to sleep at night if even one person thought this was a reflection of Jack's feelings and admiration for you and all you accomplished together. I did see one report from someone who I know was at Las Vegas who said he did see Jack Roush at some point during the weekend. So I don't know if Jack Roush was there on Sunday, but at some point over the weekend, Jack Roush was at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, but apparently he and Mark Martin's paths never crossed and Mark Martin is upset about it. Uh, look, someone at RFK, Jack Roush, Brad Keselowski, someone should have gone and said hi to Mark Martin. They should have done something, taken a photo, shook hands, reminisced or something. They, they should have interacted, no doubt. If Jack Roush was at the race on Sunday, he absolutely should have gone and, and shook Mark Martin's hand, maybe posed for a picture. This is where things get a little weird because RFK had Castrol motor oils on their cars this weekend as a primary sponsor. I think for, I think it was for Chris Buescher. Mark Martin's over here posing with a Vaveline car who is a rival and actually is a Hendrick Motorsports sponsor now. So I understand maybe Jack Roush not wanting to pose for a photo with a rival sponsor, but he should have at least gone and said hi and shook his hand. Maybe they just took a photo, not with the car, just standing out on the grid, something like that. If Jack Roush was there, he should have gone and said hi to Mark Martin. Now, I don't love Mark Martin, you know, publicly putting Jack Roush on blast like this. That's just me, personally. I too would be offended if I was Mark Martin. I just don't know that I would air those frustrations publicly, you know, the same day all this other great stuff happened. You know what I mean? To each their own, just some wacky drama between a couple of NASCAR Hall of Famers. I know Jack Roush has a reputation of sorts of being kind of hard to work with. So this seems totally on brand for him that he would, you know, not think to show up and shake the hand of the guy who brought him so much success for many, many years. This, this just seems on brand for Jack Roush. That's just who he is. I feel like we should all kind of come to expect that at some point. Anyway, I just wanted to address that right here because it's interesting, if nothing else. Final story, and I want to spend the most time on this one. Bubba Wallace issued a public apology yesterday. He posted on, on his social media. I want to apologize for my actions on Sunday following the on-track incident with Kyle Larson and the number five car. My behavior does not align with the core values that are shared by 2311 and our partners who have played a crucial role in my incredible journey to the top of this great sport. I want to apologize to NASCAR and the fans, along with Christopher Bell, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Toyota for putting them in a situation in the playoffs that they do not deserve. I compete with immense passion, and with passion at times comes frustration. Upon reflecting, I should have represented our partners and core team values better than I did by letting my frustrations follow me outside of the car. You live and learn, and I intend to learn from this. A couple things to note. NASCAR has not yet issued their final penalty report from the weekend. That will likely happen later this afternoon, Tuesday afternoon, or maybe early Wednesday morning. I think it's important to know that when contextualizing Bubba Wallace's comments right here. Reading the actual statement itself, he doesn't specify exactly what he's sorry for. He does say his actions outside of the car. So he's primarily apologizing for, I guess, the, the fight, if you'd call it that, when he went up and started shoving Larson, you know, when he brushed off the NASCAR car officials, you know, walked away from the ambulance that was supposed to take him to the infield care center. He's not any more specific than that. He just apologizes for his actions, his behavior. He doesn't go into any specifics. He does not apologize to Kyle Larson. He mentions Larson by name, but just in the context of, hey, here's the incident, here's what happened. His apology is not directed at Larson whatsoever. He does, however, directly apologize to NASCAR, the fans, as well as Christopher Bell. Now, why is he apologizing to Christopher Bell? 
On Sunday, Bubba blamed Larson for the wreck, and Bubba said his steering broke in that crash. Bubba Wallace apologizing to Christopher Bell and Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota for affecting their playoffs, that could be viewed as an admission of guilt. You could interpret that as him admitting he turned Larson on purpose because that's the contact that led to Christopher Bell's wreck. If his steering was actually broke, then what happened to Christopher Bell really wouldn't be his fault. Unless Bubba is saying he could have lifted before the initial contact with Larson. Remember after the race he said, I don't lift. Maybe he's showing remorse for those comments and saying that, oh, I should have lifted and that would have prevented the whole wreck from ever happening. It would have just been an annoying deal. And there's a couple ways to interpret it, but one way to interpret it is that he's quietly admitting to losing his cool and wrecking Larson on purpose. Now, I'm not sure NASCAR is going to view it that way. We have seen the telemetry, though. Parker Kligerman on his TikTok did a great job illustrating that Bubba mashed the gas and made a hard left right before crashing into Kyle Larson. Between that, between this kind of awkwardly worded apology, I think it was pretty clear that that move was intentional. It was meant to be retaliation and Bubba Wall should be severely penalized for it. I'm no judge, of course. We'll see what NASCAR comes down with. I stand by my comments a couple days ago. He should be suspended for one race. Noah Gregson was docked 30 points for spinning someone out in an Xfinity race on a much slower racetrack. Bubba Wallace right rearing someone into the dog leg at nearly 170 miles per hour, possibly the worst angle you could hit a wall at. To me, that should be 50 points minimum. I, of course, am calling for a suspension. You really need to get the point across that that is not okay. Joey Logano on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio today echoed comments I made a couple days ago. You know, this wreck could have ended Kyle Larson's career. Logano said it could have ended Kyle Larson's life. Maybe that's a tad over dramatic, but with the safety issues we've seen in this car, I don't think it is. I really don't think it's much of an exaggeration. Bubba Wallace should be suspended one race. You cannot right rear someone at 170 miles per hour. I don't care who you are, what series you're in. That should be subject to major discipline. Of course, that hasn't stopped Las Vegas Motor Speedway from already using the incident to promote ticket sales for next year's race. They deleted the tweet after a lot of backlash, but you can't delete newspapers that have already been printed and distributed. <sighs> Look, I have no issue, no issue whatsoever with them promoting the, the fight, the shoving back and forth. No problem. Promote that all you want. I do have an issue, though, with promoting a dangerous crash like that, especially before we know what the penalty is, before we know if Kyle Larson or anyone else sustained an injury. Like, you know, Alex Bowman didn't announce his concussion until, like, Thursday. It's only Tuesday. Well, hopefully Larson's okay. He seemed all right afterwards. Not a cool move by LVMS in this case. Honestly, I'm nearly as offended by the choice of impact font, the whole meme attempt they're going for here. I don't know. That's just me, but uh, come on, Las Vegas. What are we doing? Anyway, I think that covers just about everything. We we'll, might be back here later today, maybe tomorrow, reacting to the penalty or no penalty. NASCAR hands Bubba Wallace. Uh, until then, take it easy, y'all. The comment section has been on fire the last couple days. Many reasonable or passionate but reasonable responses, but also a handful of just abhorrent stuff you just can't avoid on the internet, especially not when Bubba Wallace is involved. But uh, share your thoughts down below. Try to keep it civil, as always. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well for helping support the show support the channel. I greatly appreciate it. I will see you again very, very soon. We have a very exciting announcement coming up later this week. Teased it a little bit yesterday. Uh, can't wait to share even more details with y'all. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.